A very good afternoon to all. Welcome to our Tally CA Connect. Our today's topic of discussion is how Tally Prime helps make e invoicing process very easy. Our expert for today is CA Pankaj Deshpande. I would like to add a brief introduction for Pankaj sir. Pankaj sir is in practice for over 20 years now. He is a qualified information system auditor. He is, a pra he is practicing in specialized area of accounting systems. He has conducted tally and accounts training for chartered accountants, CA students, service tax commissioners, income tax commissioners, and various business businessmen and at various uh, metro cities. And uh, Pankaj sir is a regular faculty at ICI and he mm -hmm. has uh, conducted development program for ITT and advanced ITT as per the CA curriculum. He has designed and written content for official study material of ICI. We are proud that CA Pankaj is a tally evangelist and has taken a time from his very busy schedule for today's CA Connect. Thank you, Pankaj, sir. And a uh, note to the audience. So before we begin, please uh, direct your questions to Q&A and uh, keep the replies by Pankaj, sir, required or any comments in the chat box so that it's easier to track your questions and we answer all the queries. Thank you. Over to you, Pankaj, sir. Thank you very much, Komal ji, for a nice introduction. And thank you, Tally Solutions Private Limited, for inviting me to this particular program. I am a Tally, I, am, I would not say that I am a Tally Evangelist. I know that you people use these words, Tally Evangelist, but I consider myself as a Tally lover, not a Tally Evangelist. <laughs> so I think that would be synonymous for the same. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. So Tally lover is a next degree. It is a next level. So... Uh, it is the strength of the power that people feel proud to say that I am a tally lover. And it is not the case for me only, it is the case for most of the chartered accountants because most of the chartered accountants are connected directly or indirectly with tally or tally users and they love to use tally. So today's topic, today's topic is, let me share my screen now. E-invoicing in tally. As all of you know that e-invoicing was introduced some time back and we thought, we people thought that it is for big companies only because at that time it was introduced for the companies or organizations where turnover is more than 500 crores. Gradually it was decreased to 100 crores, then 50 crores and then 20 and from 1st of October it will be applicable for a person or organization having a turnover of 10 crores or more. <clears throat> so now we can reasonably assume that everybody will be connected, almost everybody will be connected with e-invoicing directly or indirectly. And I hope this particular audience has got majority of chartered accountants, the audience is uh, consisting of majority of chartered accountants. There might be some non-chartered accountants also, but mostly people are connected with either CA or CA offices. So it is our responsibility to ensure that e-invoicing is done smoothly. Most of our clients are using Tally. So today we are going to discuss how this job can be done very easily with the help of Tally. What are the Tips and tricks which might be very useful for all of us for using Tally for e-invoicing. Let us start. I know it is a mixed audience. There might be some accountants, some article clerks of CFMs. So I am starting it right from the beginning. We are talking about e-invoice. So before that, let us discuss what is invoice. As all of us know what is invoice. It is a documentary proof of a sales transaction. It is a documentary proof of sales transaction. We create invoice. It may be called as bill also, but in GST language, it is called as invoice. What is e-invoice? I know I am speaking in front of chartered accountant, but still let me start it from beginning and let me discuss it from zero scratch. What is e-invoice? E-invoice is electronic invoice as all of us know. Many a times, some people, very few people get confused about e-invoice. What they assume? They assume that e-invoice means invoice generated from a computer. Sometimes I have personally experienced this. Sometimes people feel that PDF file is considered as e-invoice. Why? Because they have heard the word e-book. What is e-book? One is called as book. Book that is physical book on printed on paper. And what is e-book? E-book is nothing but a PDF file. 
PDF file or that book. So people sometimes I have seen that people consider that PDF file of any invoice is called as electronic invoice. So it is not the case in this case. It is something different. E invoicing is nothing but giving information to government for each single invoice. Giving information to each giving giving information to government for each single invoice. It is called as e invoicing. We have to provide information regarding each and every invoice at that time only to the government. That is GST department. That is GST portal. And for whom it is applicable today in this topic in this session we will be discussing some conceptual part about e invoicing and in later part very quickly we will be discussing how this can be done very easily in tally. So we will be discussing both. We will be discussing law aspects to to some extent and we will be discussing the tally aspect also applicable for to whom it is applicable. Some of you have started already started asking questions. Your questions are most welcome. But for the time being, I am not answering your questions. Just not to disturb the flow of our session. I am going to answer each and every query. Don't worry at all. And I hope that most of your queries will be answered through the lecture itself. So you may not be required to ask the queries also in some cases. But still, your queries are most welcome. You can definitely put it into question and answer box. So it is applicable for B two B sales. It is applicable for B two G sales. B two B stands for business to business. That is a transaction between two persons who are registered under GST. One person is registered under GST, the seller, and the buyer is also registered under GST. So this, if this type of transaction takes place, e invoicing is applicable. And B two G stands for business to government. It is also applicable in B two G case. It is also applicable in case of export sales. Please remember. So these are the three cases where e invoicing is applicable. Now applicable for again. Let us discuss about the turnover criteria. Turnover more than ten crores, and it is. For which financial year? This is something very important and crucial for us. Sometimes we may commit a mistake in understanding this definition. It is a turnover for any financial year from seventeen eighteen to twenty one twenty two. It is quite possible that your client was having a turnover of fifteen crores, twenty crores in the financial year seventeen eighteen. Later on, the turnover decreased. To five crores only, and now it is only five crores. But still, e invoicing will be applicable as his turnover, his or her turnover was more than ten crores in seventeen eighteen. So this is accident prone spot where we may commit a mistake in understanding, and it is applicable from first October twenty two, as all of us know. That it is applicable from first October 22. If your turnover criteria is 10 crores, if your turnover criteria is 100 crores, 500 crores, doesn't matter. It is already applicable. Turnover. Now, what is the definition of turnover? It is a pan-based turnover. Your client, your, or you may also have. Offices in multiple states. You may have multiple GST registrations. So all the GST registrations will be clubbed. The turnover under all the GST registrations will be clubbed because there will be one single pan only. There will be one single pan. So it is a pan-based turnover, aggregate turnover, and it includes exempt supply also. Please remember. So, if you are providing a taxable supply as well as exempt supply, so you have to include a taxable as well as exempt supply for calculation of turnover figure. So, turnover will be calculated on these three criteria. But at the same time, it excludes non-GST supply, the goods where GST is not applicable at all. It will be excluded. Excludes non-GST supply. <clears throat> now there are certain exemptions what are these exemptions insurer banking company financial institutions 
or NBFC, non-banking financial company, all these are exempt from e-invoicing irrespective of their turnover. State Bank of India may have a turnover in 1000 crores, lakh crores. Even if turnover is exceeding, key invoicing is not applicable. For insurance companies, for banking companies, for financial institutions or NBFC non-banking financial companies, turnover priority is absolutely not applicable. They do not have to issue e invoice. Goods transport agency. Goods transport agency people are like son-in-law of government. They always get a special treatment. They always get a special treatment. And this is not only in GST era. This is since service tax era. Once upon a time, around 15, 20 years back, government tried to bring them, these people, goods transport agency people into service tax net. These people went on a strike, nationwide strike, for three days, 72 hours, 72 hours, for 72 hours, there were no movement of trucks. All the transport were completely stopped. And ultimately, government had to go down before the needs of these goods transport agency people. And since then, the reverse charge mechanism was introduced at that time. This reverse charge mechanism is applicable today also, and it is applicable for goods transport agency. So they need not issue any e invoice. They are always exempt. Passenger transportation services like aeroplane, bus, train, whatever it may be, they need not issue any e invoice. Exempt. And exhibition of cinematographic films. Again, this is exempt from e invoicing. This is these people, the, the people who are providing these type of services. They are not into e-invoice net. SEZ, the person who is registered in SEZ, Special Economic Zone, there are around 300 SEZs all over India, spread across India. So if you are registered under any of the SEZ, Special Economic Zone, then you need not issue any type of e-invoice. Now, this is something very interesting and really important for us to understand. Documents covered. Which are the documents where e-invoicing is applicable? We are considering, we are discussing one by one each and every small aspect of e-invoicing. First, we discussed what type of transactions B2B and B2G. Then to whom it is applicable as far as turnover criteria is concerned. Now, we are going to discuss about documents covered. For which type of documents e-invoicing is applicable? So first and the most known document is tax invoice. So for tax invoice, for tax invoice, it is applicable. If it is a document called as tax invoice, then e-invoicing is applicable. What are the other documents where e-invoicing is applicable? Can you please type in the chat box? All of you are chartered accountants and know. And I'm speaking in front of elite audience. I hope the chat is not blocked. Let me check. Show chat to use. Yes. It's enabled, sir. It is enabled. Okay, okay. So I'm waiting for chats. Can you name any other document where invoicing is applicable? I have given one example. Tax invoice. Where it is applicable in any other case. If it is an invoice, if it is a sales bill, you have to issue e invoice. Komalji, I think chat is disabled because nobody is replying. Uh, sir, I think QA name may reply here. Uh, let me check. I think chat is enabled actually. Yes, QA name may reply. Gaya. Okay, okay. Chat is disabled. Gunjan Aneja, delivery chalan. Yes. Hmm. Kamlesh Vagmare. I think Komalji, please check whether chat is working. Yes, sir. I would like to ask one question. I would like to get one information from you. Is there anybody who doesn't understand Hindi at all? Just let me know in the chat box. Type no Hindi if you do not understand Hindi at all. Because Hindi is a natural language for me. 
and to some extent i may speak in hindi if you do not understand hindi at all just let me know i will ensure that i am speaking in english only i won't speak in hindi but if everybody understand hindi to some extent i will be speaking in hindi so i have enabled i'm sorry uh, yes 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 deepak jain ji ka kehna hai yes credit note and debit note absolutely right deepak ji please remember there are three types of documents which are covered under this e invoicing one is tax invoice other is debit note and third is credit note we understand what is a debit note and what is a credit note it is a document it is a transaction which is in consequence of a tax invoice it is it is uh, created for alteration to previous transaction yes purane transaction mein कुछ अल्टर करना है हमें तो हम डेबिट नोट या क्रेडिट नोट के थ्रू करते हैं आइर परचेस और सेल्स दोनों यस सो वी हैव अंडरस्टूड व्हाट टाइप ऑफ डॉक्यूमेंट्स आर कवर्ड इन इनवॉइसिंग नाउ लेट अस अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट सर यू ऑन म्यूट पंकज सर so the word used in previous slide it was tax invoice here clean share is also off sir if clean sharing one. also gone yes there was a disconnection for few second one two seconds okay now it is okay ha sir yes previous slide mein aapne dekha hoga ki humne jo shabd use kiya tha that was tax invoice it was tax invoice yahan pe shabd hai bill of supply bill of supply and tax invoice both are sale bill but in case of tax invoice tax is shown separately in case of bill of supply tax is <clears throat> delivery chalan in case of delivery chalan e invoicing is not applicable please remember delivery chalan or delivery memo or dm whatever you may call it even if you are sending the goods to the other person please remember e invoicing is not applicable this is a common question which is asked by many people that sir i am sending the goods on dm should i create e invoice should i register for e invoice absolutely no it is not an invoice so you need not go to the portal and generate irn or qr code e invoice is not applicable for b to c sales please remember this is a very very good news for all of us b to c sales in case of b to c sales no e invoicing is applicable please remember if it is a b to c means the person if who is registered person and he is selling to unregistered person or consumer jiska gst registration nahi hai to wahan pe e invoicing applicable nahi hai ye bahut khushi ki baat hai hamari and exempt sales if it is an exempt sale then you need not create e invoice now there is a small question which may be there in your mind if your sales invoice contains four items out of these four items three are taxable and one is exempt should we record should we create e invoice whether turnover calculation whether b to c sales to be included yes 100% <clears throat> exam sales are excluded from e invoicing agar totally exempt hai aapka bill totally exempt hai jahan pe koi tax nahi hai to wahan pe invoice nahi rahega lekin agar partly exempt partly taxable hai to it is not fully exempt so invoicing is applicable <clears throat> how amazon and flipkart will get generated e invoice for b2c customer yes that's why or probably that may be reason in case of b2c there will be no e invoicing and if government feels that it is necessary the amazon and flipkart they will be forced to do it please remember they will be forced to do it our economy our decision decisions of our country taxation will not be governed by the convenience of these big players amazon or flipkart 
now what is irn let us understand what is irn irn stands for invoice reference number invoice reference number is a unique number unique number assigned to each and every invoice that is generated on e invoice portal it contains 64 characters and it is a unique number it contains alphabets as well as number और ये यूनिक रहेगा तो हमारे देश में मान के चलिए कि एक साल में 10 करोड़ इनवॉइसेस जनरेट हो रहे हैं सो देर विल बी 10 करोड़ यूनिक आई आर एन रेफरेंस नंबर ये हर जीएसटी नंबर के लिए मतलब एक जीएसटी नंबर एक डीलर है वो एक डीलर अगर मल्टीपल इनवॉइसेस जनरेट कर रहा है अगर मतलब क्या करने वाला है एक साल में पचास सौ सौ पांच सौ हजार कितने भी इनवॉइसेस हो सकते हैं तो ऐसे जितने भी डीलर्स रजिस्टर्ड है जीएसटी में सारे लोग जितने इनवॉइसेस जनरेट करेंगे सबका नंबर लग रहेगा व्हाट इज ई इनवॉइस प्रोसेस द प्रोसेस लेट अस अंडरस्टैंड द प्रोसेस कंसेप्चुअली फर्स्ट एंड देन विल सी इट हाउ इट कैन बी डन थ्रू टैली फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू नीड टू क्रिएट इन इन टैली आप जैसा रूटीन में इनवॉइस बनाते हैं वैसे ही इनवॉइस आपको बनाना है सेम इनवॉइस उसमें कोई खास बात नहीं है कोई स्पेशल थिंग नहीं है प्रोवाइड इनवॉइस इंफॉर्मेशन प्रोवाइड इंफॉर्मेशन टू द गवर्नमेंट दैट इज जीएसटी पोर्टल फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल जनरेट द इनवॉइस इन टैली देन प्रोवाइड द इंफॉर्मेशन इनवॉइस इंफॉर्मेशन टू गवर्नमेंट जनरेट आई आर एन द आई आर एन यू नीड नॉट जनरेट द आई एन द पोर्टल विल जनरेट द आई आर एन एंड आफ्टर जनरेटिंग द आई एन पोर्टल विल फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वैलिडेट द इंफॉर्मेशन द इंफॉर्मेशन सप्लाइड बाई यू विल बी वैलिडेटेड एंड वंस इट इज वैलिडेटेड वंस एवरीथिंग इज ओके देन आई आर एन विल बी iron will have to be typed or printed on your regular tax invoice so this is the simple process provide information invoice information first to the government portal it will generate iron and you will get the iron on invoice or you will have to get it either automatically or manually now this is the process if you are generating e invoice if you are generating iron what are the modes there are two modes what are these two modes first is offline second is online just like gst return filing there are two modes you can generate it online or you can generate it offline now what is this offline what is this online we will understand and at the same time we will understand how it can be done very easily using tally software <clears throat> now let us assume that you are not using tally software so what you will have to do you will have to generate all the information in your accounting software whatever it may be or let us understand the case where you are using tally software but you are not using e invoicing facility of tally e invoicing feature of tally then what you need to do chali abhi baat kar de iske bare mein ya to aap tally use hi nahi kar rahe lekin aisa case nahi ho sakta kyunki yahan pe aane wale 100% log tally user hai main janta hu to chalo hum case aisa lete hain ki aap tally user hai और आप टैली का ई इनवॉइसिंग फीचर यूज नहीं कर रहे हैं यू आर नॉट यूजिंग ई इनवॉइसिंग फीचर ऑफ टैली देन व्हाट यू नीड टू डू यू नीड टू रिकॉर्ड द इनवॉइस एज इट इज जस्ट लाइक एनी अदर रेगुलर इनवॉइस आप इनवॉइस रिकॉर्ड करेंगे और रिकॉर्ड करने के बाद में आप जीएसटी पोर्टल पे जाएंगे वहां पर एक यूटिलिटी है एक्सेल यूटिलिटी वो एक्सेल यूटिलिटी को आप फील करेंगे सारे इनवॉइस की इंफॉर्मेशन वहां पर डालेंगे Or after putting the invoice, after putting the information in utility, you will import that utility into GST portal and you will generate IRM. Now, what is the problem with this case? This is possible. What is the problem with this case? The problem with this case is that you or your staff may commit a mistake in putting the information. You may commit a mistake in putting the information. and in that case you will be in serious trouble point number 1 point number 2 it will take extra time and extra efforts to do this activity so we are here to understand how we can ensure that e invoicing is error free 100% correct and we are also saving the time 
so tally has given us a very beautiful facility excellent facility where we can do it very easily for that purpose what you need to do for that purpose i am changing the screen sharing now and we will be going to tally now this is tally software i have opened one particular company i hope you are able to see my tally screen but before that let me go to the next slide and show two steps what are the steps for e invoice generation first of all let us understand website for e invoice generation the website is e invoice1.gst.gov.in this is the website address for generating e invoice i hope that you know there are two websites for gst one is for gst return filing other is for e way bill generation does anybody know why there are two websites why there is no one website one website for e way bill and the same website for e return filing also aisa kyu nahi hai kisi ko pata hai kya ye e way bill ki website alag hai gst ki website alag hai why this is so can anybody type in the chat box why it is so this is out of syllabus question please do not raise the hand for the time being yes please uh, let me know load anurag manchandana manchana ha uh, then realme x2 pro yes thank you kamlesh wagmare no why there are two websites ek website hai e bill ke liye ek website hai gst return filing ke liye aisa kyun gst is for registered and e way all can generate different functions mithun ram rahul agrawal okay chaliye main aapko batata hu ye kahin likha nahi hai it is not official why this is so network issue when it was decided to launch this gst law gst act it was the dream of government that everything should be seamless and automatic there are these are two concepts so that the site will not get jammed okay hmm. network issue rajkumar rao ha ye andar ki baat hai जो कि मैं आपको बता रहा हूं वाई दिस इज सो गवर्नमेंट ने जब सोचा कि जीएसटी होना चाहिए और जीएसटी पूरा ऑटोमेट होना चाहिए तो ये ई वे बिल कंसेप्ट जो है ये पहले ही दिन से था ऐसा बिल्कुल भी नहीं है कि ई वे बिल बाद में ध्यान में आया गवर्नमेंट के और बाद में सोचा कि अभी ई वे बिल भी आना चाहिए ई वे बिल वॉज देयर इन द इनिशियल ड्राफ्ट ओनली इट वॉज इन इनिशियल प्लान बट इट वॉज प्लान आफ्टर सम टाइम की हम एक 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 स्टेप बाई स्टेप में सारी चीजें करेंगे इट विल नॉट बी लोडेड इमीजिएटली सो इट वॉज प्लान ऐसा नहीं कि अनप्लान था इनिशियली गवर्नमेंट हैंडेड ओवर द होल असाइनमेंट टू द टॉप मोस्ट आईटी कंपनी ऑफ अवर कंट्री दैट इज इंफोसिस तो इंफोसिस को ये पूरा काम दिया गया इंफोसिस को काम देने के बाद वो जीएसटी वेबसाइट में क्या हुआ ये आप मुझसे ज्यादा जानते हैं सब लोग जानते हैं कि वो जीएसटी वेबसाइट में कितने कितने भयंकर प्रॉब्लम आए और इतने प्रॉब्लम आने के बाद वो प्रॉब्लम जो है एक प्रॉब्लम सॉल्व करने के बाद दूसरा आता था दूसरे के बाद तीसरा तीसरे के बाद चौथा प्रॉब्लम ही प्रॉब्लम था तारीख पे तारीख में सी प्रॉब्लम पे प्रॉब्लम और ये प्रॉब्लम खत्म होने के लिए बहुत दिन लग गए बहुत दिन क्या साल लग गया एक दो साल के ऊपर समय चला गया और उसके बीच में गवर्नमेंट को ई वे बिल लाना था तो ई वे बिल यस सो गवर्नमेंट वॉन्टेड टू इंट्रोड्यूस ई वे बिल फंक्शनलिटी एट दैट टाइम एंड इन दैट केस गवर्नमेंट thought that we should not rely on one particular vendor we should have another vendor also so they allotted this particular assignment to the second top most company of our country that is that is tcs yes sorry mithun ji i will be speaking in english only i initially asked this question that is there anybody who do not understand hindi at all if this is the case i will be speaking in english only but let me tell you that hindi is my natural language so but still i will remember okay no problem so at that time the government decided to hand over the work to another company that is 
TCS Tata Consultancy Services, and now the eWebil website is managed by TCS, and the regular GST website that is gst.gov.in. This website is managed by Infosys today also. This is the reason. So we have two different website. One is eWebil website, other is GST website. This is the e-invoicing is the part of GST website only. Now, what are the steps for e-invoice generation from tally? This particular lecture, the part of tally is very small in this particular lecture. Why? Because tally has designed this feature feature in such a beautiful way that it is really simple. It is a matter of two minutes only. You can start using invoicing in tally in just two minutes. So I am explaining the background to you. Steps for e-invoice generation from tally. Step number one, first of all, register your GST Suvida provider. First job, first task is to complete it out of tally software, not in tally software. The second setting is to be done in tally software. So first task, first step is that you should register your GST Suvida provider. Where you can register it? Now let me change my screen sharing and let us go to. Google Chrome. I am going to Google Chrome now. I hope that you are able to view my Google Chrome screen. If yes, then don't type anything. If no, then only type e invoice one dot gst dot gov dot in. This is the address. Let us. Go to this portal, and here, let us go to login. So I am login. I am uh, entering into this portal. Just a minute. You need to go to this portal once only. You need not go to this portal again and again. This is a one-time activity. You need to register your GSP, that is GST Suvida provider. Let me show it to you practically. Just a minute. Let me check it once again in my laptop. I hope you are able to see my uh, web browser. Yes, sir. This password is not working. Let me check the password. Just a minute. 
there are certain chats. Yes, thank you very much for your patience. I was working on wrong website. The website address is different. E way bill. It was the address for generation of e invoicing. First of all, we have to register at GST Suvida portal. Let us go to this address. E way bill. GST dot gov dot in. Just a minute. The screen share. Yes, I am sharing the screen. This is screen sharing. Let me share it once again. You may build gst.gov.in. This is the address. It looks very similar. The page is quite similar, but the address is different. R three seven D seven. Q B D Q three. The e mobile system is asking me to change the password. I need not change the password. I am just exiting. Dear taxpayer, we will check it later on. So this is the e-way bill portal where you have to register to generate e-invoice. You have to register on e-way bill portal. Please remember. Here I am going to registration. I am going to this registration, and inside registration there is a menu. There is a menu for GSP. I am clicking on this menu GSP. After I click on this menu. I am getting one option: register your GST Suvida provider or ERP. Send OTP. I am sending the OTP. After sending the OTP, you will get the OTP on mobile or email or both. I am just opening my email. Yes, I got the email. Now I have to type and verify the OTP. Let me open my email. Mm. 
this is the OTP. I am just copying the OTP and I am pasting it here. Now the verify OTP. Four two three nine eight four. Four two three nine eight four. This activity, I have already completed this activity. Hence, it is showing that list of GSP registered. So I have already done this activity. In your case, if you are doing it for the first time, you will not get any name here. You will not get anything here. You have to click here, add or new, add oblique new. So I am clicking here. As soon as I click here, add new. Now I have I have the option to register my GST Suvida provider. GST name, I am clicking here. On clicking here, you will get lot of names here, but we have to select only one option. The option is at the bottom. It is Tally India Private Limited. We have to select this Tally India Private Limited. Once we select this Tally India Private Limited, I will be getting the username already set by GST portal. I have to just type the number here. You can type any number here for three, three, let, three characters. So five four three one 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 two 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 three 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 whatever it may be you can type you just repeat it set the password password must be fifteen characters and press add if you do it it will be added I am not doing it again because it is already done I am pressing exit this is the activity number one which you have to do now what is the second activity second activity is again very simple I am I have changed the screen sharing. The second activity is now it is about tally. There are only two activities which we have to do for e invoice setting. Register your GST Suvida provider on GST portal and then enable e invoicing in Tally Prime. Now let us go to Tally Prime and let us enable. Now once again I am changing my screen sharing. This is my Tally Prime screen. I hope it is visible now. I have already done this activity, but I am doing it once again. I am showing it to you once again for your reference. Now I am pressing F11 on my keyboard, F11 function key. On pressing F11 screen, enter, enter, and I am going to the right hand side part here. Enable goods and services tax GST. I am setting it to yes. It is already yes. In your case also, it might be yes. After setting it to yes, just go to the right hand side and there is an option here. What is the option here? The option here is enable e-invoice. This is the option. E-invoicing applicable. Let it be yes. You have to set this option yes. If, uh, once you set this option, you need not do anything else. In case of, in, for regarding setting. Once it is set, it is set forever. I am pressing enter and accept. Control A. My settings for e-invoicing is over. I need not do anything. First, register your Sivida provider on GST portal and then go to Tally and set e-invoicing applicable to yes. Now what you need to do, you just go and record the invoices. I am recording the invoices now. I am pressing F8. After pressing F8, I am going to sales. And in sales, let us create one sales invoice. Let us select one party. I have selected a party. Control A accepted. Fees, income tax. Let us take the fees, income tax. Let us say 25,000. Press enter, enter. Now let us type CGST, then SGST, and at the bottom, Tally is asking me a question, simple question, provide e-invoice details. I am pressing enter. Build to place, let us say Nagpur. And ship to place, let us also say Nagpur. I am sending the bill from Nagpur to Nagpur only. Enter, new reference, enter, enter, enter and accept. Now a question is asked by Tally to me, do you want to generate e-invoice? I am saying yes. I have an option to say no also. Why no? 
बिकॉज इट मे हैपन दैट यू हैव टू जनरेट टेन ट्वेंटी थर्टी इन वॉयसेस एंड एवरी टाइम यू नीड नॉट गो टू जी एस टी पोर्टल यू कैन जनरेट ई इन वॉयसिंग इन बल्क ऑल्सो सो दिस इज द ऑप्शन गिवन बाय टेली यू मे इग्नोर इट फॉर द टाइम बिंग एंड इन द इवनिंग यू कैन जनरेट ऑल द इन वॉयसेस सो आई एम प्रेसिंग एंटर करेंटली टू जनरेट द इन वॉयसेस मैंडेटरी इन्फॉर्मेशन फॉर इन वॉइस नॉट स्पेसिफाइड और इन वैलिड दिस इज द error given by tally now what to do i am just pressing escape and what i can do i can go to this report that is display more reports display more reports then statutory reports after statutory reports let us go to gst report and let us go to e invoice this is an option given by tally newly Information required for e invoice not provided. There is one one voucher in error. I am pressing this voucher. Now let us check what is the error. Wire bill to pin code need to be six digit. It is saying that we have not entered pin code. I am pressing enter. Pin code four four zero zero one zero. This is the pin code. I am pressing enter. Enter and accept. Now the error is removed. after removing the error we are ready for e invoice generation i am going to this option that is for irn generation i am pressing enter i am pressing space bar and after pressing space bar what i can do just there is an option here exchange i can click on this option and select send for e invoicing i am selecting it send for e invoicing let us see what happens are we able to generate e invoicing hmm. i am selecting this and i am clicking send here send after sending for iron generation 1 for iron cancellation 0 do you want to continue i am pressing yes you need a valid license to perform this activity just there was a disturbance for few seconds one two seconds only and in that process my license was lost let me restart let me restart my tally and get the license just a minute Pangatza. Once we are set with everything, it takes few minutes only to set. But once we are set, it will be a very easy process for us. And the invoicing generation will be a cake walk, just like cake walk. Now I have got the tally license. from my server i am sitting in my office as all of i know all of you are sitting in the office and all of you are thinking about your tax audits and as well as company audits same is the case with me also Yes. Now the company is open. Let me share my screen once again. Now I hope you are able to view my tele screen. 
I am once again going to this exchange and clicking on this exchange send for e invoicing. I am selecting the voucher by pressing space bar and I am clicking on this send. Do you want to continue? Yes. I want to continue. I am. I have pressed yes. Now tally will connect with portal and before it connects with portal, it need user ID and password. Now from where you will get this user ID and password? This is the user ID and password which you have generated on that eBay bill portal. API user ID. So I'm typing my API user ID. This is my user ID. And I have typed my password. I'm pressing enter. As soon as I press enter, what happens in the background? Tally connects with GST portal. Tally transfers all the information that is required for generation of e invoice from Tally to GST portal. GST portal will validate the information. And if everything is okay, it will generate IRL. And that IRL will be passed on to Tally. And IRL will be saved in Tally data. It will be printed on your invoice and your work is over. So your accountant need not do anything. Here, exchange summary count documents rejected by e-invoice system. Why the document is rejected? Let me show it to you. The process is completed. The information is submitted with GST portal. GST portal has generated the response and the response is transferred to Tally. Now, what is the reason? Let us check the reason. Display more reports, then statutory reports, then GST reports, then e-invoice, and in case of invoice rejected by e invoice system, five vouchers are rejected by invoice system. Let us understand the reason. The document date should be should not be the future date. Deliberately, I have created a sales invoice for first October. Today it is not first October, so it is a future date. So the document was rejected by invoice. Deliberately, I did this because I do not I do do I. <laughs> I don't want to create some invalid data or some untrue data on GST portal. So that's why I deliberately selected this particular date. Can I get the recording of this webinar? You will definitely get the recording of this webinar from Tally itself, no problem at all. So this is the most simple, simple system by Tally where you can generate e-invoice. Actually, e-invoicing is something which should not take any time at all. You need not put in any type of efforts for generation of e-invoice or IRM. It should be automatic and this automatic process has been given, has been this process, this, patch, this feature, this facility is given by Tally to us and it is really simple and wonderful. Now, there are other options also. As far as invoicing is concerned, there are other options also. One is get IRN info. So I can click here and get the IRN info for a particular invoice. Secondly, you may generate it in bulk. This is what I have just shown it to you. Send for invoicing. You can generate it in bulk. You will be able to generate in bulk. Now, let me tell you some points regarding e-invoicing. Now, once again, I'm changing the screen sharing. I hope now you are able to view my screen, view my screen, PowerPoint screen. So any limit on invoice amount for e-invoice. Again, we are discussing some law aspect. Let us assume that e-invoicing is applicable for us. We are already generating e-invoice. So is there any limit if I am generating an invoice for rupees 100 only? Invoice for rupees 100 only. So should I create e invoice? Should I generate IRN for this? I would like to know it from you. Should we have to register in e bill portal or e invoicing portal? We have to register on e bill portal. Please remember, we have to register on e portal. Registration is on e bill portal. And once you register, 
then you need not go to e invoicing portal e invoicing portal is different you need not go to e invoicing portal why because this will be generated from tally itself automatically neeraj ji neeraj nagpal within how many days irn has to be generated after the creation of invoice and tally in case of services no e way bill requirement you have to generate e invoice within 24 hours so any limit on invoice amount for e invoice is there any limit this is the question so the question is simple answer is also simple answer is no even if you are creating invoice for rupees 1 rupee 1 then also if it is a b2b invoice then you have to create e invoice this is a compulsion so there is no limit on amount if it is below 100 you need not create no such things so for each invoice which is a b2b invoice and where e invoicing is applicable you have to create irn you have to generate irn in tally how to get pdf or print of invoice with after generating it is automatic process once you generate invoice it will be the irn will be pasted copied and pasted on your invoice it will be saved in the invoice itself you may take a print out immediately or you may take a print out later also it will be there and if you want to send pdf file of your invoice it will be there in pdf file also you need not do anything that care has been taken by tally itself that's why i say that i am not a tally evangelist i am a tally lover so this is something for regarding e invoicing from my side now if at all there are any questions you can definitely ask me these are two helpline numbers from my side to all of you if you want to ask any question if you want to get any clarification if you want to connect with me i am giving i am giving these two numbers you can call on these two numbers and stay connected with me just a minute and one more thing just a minute one more thing i am giving my email address also to you so that you can send email to me in case of any query in tally you can send email to me uh -huh. so this is my email you can connect with me through this email or phone number and it is a knowledge sharing process i have certain knowledge with me i am sharing it with you you can also definitely share your knowledge with me and it is a win win situation for everybody once again i am thanking tally india private limited tally solutions private limited for inviting me to this most respected program respected stage platform and i always love to be associated with tally now there are certain questions let me check and let me try to answer these questions yes and uh, also a note to the audience if you want to ask a question now you can raise your hands we will unmute you and you can ask your question directly with pankaj sir yes yes now there is a question by ravindranath rajaram a client does 98% of sales as b2c and the only 2% sell to b2b the total turnover is just over 10 crore of which b2b accounts for less than 20 lakhs will the e invoice be applicable to such businesses i think i have already answered this question the e invoicing will be 100% applicable because what is the quantum of b2b and b2c is irrelevant if your turnover is above rupees 10 crores in any of the three financial years it is applicable and it is applicable for every b2b invoice if it is 100% b2c then it is not applicable but in whole year even if you are creating one b2b invoice and your turnover is above rupees 10 crores it is applicable yes any other question sir there are questions in the chat also in the, chat. Uh, in the audience can you please write in q and a so that there's one way how to generate invoice in 
in portal online mode you have to download that excel utility and you have put in you have to put in information into that utility once you put in the utility will import the data into the portal and invoice will be generated is there any issue faces with bill date and iran generation date if different you mean to say that if bill date is different and iran date is different actually i have not tried this <laughs> because uh, we will have to check it but preferably it is suggested to generate iran on the same day itself sir client has total turnover is 15 crore but about 8 crore is exempt and 7 8 taxable is compulsory for invoice compliance i have already answered this question it is applicable it includes exempt supply also the turnover criteria includes exempt supply also so even if let us consider the case is opposite 1 crore is taxable and 11 crore is exempt still the turnover is there above rupees 10 crores invoicing is applicable offline same process for of invoice okay this is an answer given to the previous question okay now there are certain questions in this question box also we will be registering in the e way bill and when we invoice in tally then data will be flowing into e invoice portal is my understanding correct csk rao i could not get your question but uh, let me answer your question we will be registering in the e way bill yes you have to register in the e way bill and when we invoice in tally then data will be flowing into invoice portal yes your understanding is absolutely correct you have to register on e way bill portal and your data will flow to e invoice portal automatically from tally yes right hmm. now is it possible to upload bulk invoice after a week yes it is 100% possible you can upload it but i would suggest it to do it on the same day question yes one question i was expecting one question from all of you but nobody has asked this question so far so let me ask this question and answer it on my own what if you are not generating invoice you have generated the invoice you have sent it to your client you have received the money also but you forgot to generate e invoice what to do in such case and what happens in this such case if it is so what will happen now i am asking this question to you can anybody answer this question you have generated the invoice you have sent it to you have sent it to client you have received the money the transaction is over nothing is pending but you forgot forgot to generate e invoice without generating e invoice without generating irn you have done everything so what will happen in this case if we generate instead of answering my questions you are asking other questions okay no problem Uh, if we generate invoice in next month but before gst are filing is it okay i think it will be okay i have not tried it whether it will be accepted or not because i don't know whether portal accepts it again i am saying that if by mistake it's happen you have to do it there has to be certain way on portal also can e invoice modified <clears throat> online on portal after generation of irn okay uh, can i e invoice modified online please remember no modification is allowed for e invoicing please remember no um, no modification is allowed even if there is a mistake in bill what you need to do you have to cancel that irr and generate it again no modification is allowed not in 24 hours even after next second it is not away, uh, not possible itc not claim yes this is the answer right answer receipt taken as advance sir how to cancel e invoice it is possible from tally also you can cancel by selecting the invoice you can cancel it in invoice iron cancel or you can do it on portal also ha ah, one thing i would like to mention it very clearly that if you forgot to generate iron for e for any invoice which was applicable in that case that invoice becomes invalid please remember and if that becomes invalid the other person your buyer will not get itc so this is the simple rule 
this particular video uh, today's session will be uploaded on youtube probably i don't know whether they are going to upload it but i Sir, it will be uploaded. Uh, so the recording will be available in a day or two. Once we, you know, cut short and do a little editing, it will okay. be uploaded in community uh, portals, community .com, and also in our YouTube channel under Tally C Connect videos. Okay, so, uh, it will be available. Yes, yes, no problem. I would like to add one more thing here that uh, if you want to know more about Tally, if you want to know more about these such type of tips, tricks about Tally, I have my own YouTube channel also. Komal ji, with your permission, can I can I tell them about my YouTube channel also? Yeah, definitely, yes, sir. Yes, it is about tally only. So many accounting aspects are there. So you can go to YouTube and search Indra Dhanu Academy. Search Indra Dhanu Academy on YouTube. It is a YouTube channel run by me, and you will get such type of tips and tricks. So many tips and tricks there. Regarding tally also. So there are a couple of questions in QA also. Yes, yes. Uh, yes, one once again I am going there. Is invoice data auto-populated in GSTR1? Then how to update B2C exempt, etc. This will be auto-populated B2C. You have to add it manually. How can we get to know the seller is under e invoice in case they forgot to add IRN? You can go to GST portal and check this. This is available on eBay bill portal. eBay bill portal shows that whether GS, whether invoicing is applicable for a particular dealer or not. On eBay bill portal, it is available. Is there any option? Is there an option to solve problem while creating credit note? Is there any option to solve the problem while creating credit note? What type of problem you are talking about? I am not able to understand what type of problem. Please explain. Payalji, I have allowed you to talk. You can ask your question directly. IRN, Mahesh Prajapati. IRN stands for Invoice Reference Number. It is a unique ID. Just like Aadhaar or PAN. Aadhaar or PAN is a unique ID and identification number for a person resident in India. It is unique identification for every invoice as i as aadhar will not be repeated it now it will not be duplicated so same is the case with irn it will not be duplicated it will be unique uncle you have a question yes so you have told that uh, this uh, if uh, so by chance we forgot to generate e invoice hmm. then uh, the other party will not get itc yes then what is the solution then? Solution, you need to generate it. <laughs> again. Yes, that generate it again. That, that invoice has to be cancelled and again we have to... Generate. Yes, yes. Cancel that invoice, create a new invoice, generate it. You have already received the payment. Yeah, one more one more question with reference to this only. Yes. See, if it is a uh, goods, uh, we are sending it uh, through eBay bill. Mm -hmm. We send the eBay bill with that previous uh, invoice. Is okay. not wrongly. Huh? Then, uh, when we generate a new invoice, huh? selling that old invoice, then mm -hmm. a conflict of e invoice, e way bill uh, versus the invoice, right? Yes, yes, definitely. So that scenario, then, like we have to manage, is no no solution for this. It is a, it is something which is out of the system. E invoicing yeah. and e way bill are to some extent connected. But what happens, e-way bill applicable, e-way bill, the importance of e-way bill is there till the time it you reaches. transfer the goods from one place to another. If there correct, is no correct. transfer of goods, no movement of goods, then e-way bill is irrelevant. Correct. correct, correct. Understood. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. Okay, welcome. I think we have no further question. Yes. Uh, uh, to the raised hands, Payal Kumari ji, do you have a question? Uh, so one last question, we'll take it in Q&A and we can close it. Q&A, okay. Whether for service invoice without eBay, dealer is also required to register through eBay bill 100%. There is no concept of service, uh, uh, means sale of service or sale of goods in case of e-invoicing. It is applicable if your turnover is 10, above 10 crore, 
and irrespective of whether you are into goods or services okay i think uh, we have no further questions left which are unanswered mm -hmm. so uh, that bring us to the end of the session so uh, pankaj sir thanks a lot i think we got just one more question in the chat uh, let me check it yeah. sir if we have received goods and party did not generate invoice can bill and e invoice be generated again i think i have answered this question just few minutes back if you have not generated e invoice that invoice is absolutely invalid as per gst system so you need to generate a valid invoice generating a valid invoice means generating along with irn so generate it again and cancel the old invoice it is as per gst it is already cancelled but you need to cancel it in accounting just reverse it okay so one more last question yes see if uh, suppose can we uh, you see after 24 hours uh, the it cannot be generated pardon after 24 hours uh -huh. generate the e invoice uh -huh. for the past invoice if any all has to be cancelled and again you have to generate a new invoice right yes if e invoice has not been generated yes yeah okay uh, pankaj sir i think uh, now we can conclude our session so thank yes. you so much and the session was very informative and very engaging so we've got a lot of requests for the video also so we will be having weekly ca connects also so please do log in and look out for the same so thank you so much thank you pankaj sir i'll now end the session yes thank you thank you everyone